step up. That's what Democratic Senator from Montana John Tester told DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas Wednesday. Tester levied one of the harshest criticisms against Mayorkas of any Democrat. Let's take a look. All you have to see is what's gone on on the southern border, and um, you know that we're in a situation that needs immediate repair, immediate fixing, immediate overhaul, whatever you want to call it. The fact is the border needs to be fixed, and we need to step up as Congress. The administration needs to step up. You need to step up. Tester, who is the key vote in the Senate on whether a full Mayorkas impeachment trial will happen, is up for re-election and sitting in one of the most vulnerable seats in the upper chamber. The DHS head has already been impeached in the Republican-controlled House, and though most Democrats in the Senate have pushed back against the effort to impeach Mayorkas, the possible holdout has signaled he's waiting to review the impeachment documents the House presents to the Senate, which is scheduled to happen next week. President Biden appeared to make moves on the immigration front this week. In a pre-recorded interview with Univision, Biden told the network he may issue an executive order soon that would limit the number of asylum seekers who can cross the southern border. Here's what he told the reporter. Have you made a final decision on taking executive order uh, in terms of what you want to do at the border? That includes the power to shut down the border, as it was suggested. Well, it suggested that. We're examining whether or not I have that power. I would have that power under the legislation when, when the border has over five, uh, 500,000 people, 5,000 people a day mm -hmm. trying to cross the border because you can't manage it, slow it up. There's no, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. Axios reports he will unveil the executive order by the end of the month. That's sort of an interesting about face, Jessica, because previously when the Senate unveiled its immigration bill, the sort of refrain from the White House was, we need them to pass this so that we can fix the border crisis. But now Biden's sort of tacitly admitting that he had the power all along to make some changes via executive order that could slow down the rush of illegal migrants coming across the southern border. Yeah, I'm very curious about the recent migration data we've gotten just over the past year, why we haven't seen concrete numbers as you know we have in the past for, um, reported by anyone in the administration, whether it's the Trump administration or the Biden administration on exit numbers. Because for many years, all the way up to, you know, when General Chapman was serving in the Secretary of Interior and was tasked with handling the border, and we really saw a huge reversal. We saw the closing of the border. We saw the amount of people who believed there to be a problem at the southern border go from, you know, just under 20 percent to over 85 percent, um, saying that, you know, people were coming over from Juarez to El Paso on a regular basis. But this was kind of a situation where one city was treated like two just because, you know, a border went through it, it didn't really change whether or not people should come over and sell fresh watermelons from Mexico and people in the United States could buy them and then they'd go back home. And it's true that that just didn't happen in cities like El Paso and Juarez, but it happened in the entire country of the United States where you had people coming over from Mexico as seasonal workers and migration was you know, cyclical every season. They would go back home to their families, they would come here to work. And what we saw happen when the border was closed under General Chapman's time in office is we saw the amount of people staying in the United States increase significantly. That instead of the majority of, of people going home because there was a risk to coming into the United States that you might not be able to get back home, that you might run into issues with border security. It became a situation where you know, people saw the risk and they decided to stay and estimates from the Center on My Mexican Migration show that actually the amount of people living in the United States that cross the southern border would be a third of what it is if it weren't for this policy change. And so we're inheriting this huge problem of, you know, we had a situation where there was this cyclical migration. Maybe there was a way to deal with it in that way. Temporary seasonal work permits rather than really investing in border security that actually increased the amount of permanent residents coming and living illegally without papers in the United States from Mexico, Central, Latin America. Yeah, I think we should do both. We should allow seasonal workers to continue to come in legally. We do have permits for that. 
also do border security and deport the people who overstay their visas or who come across illegally. I think all three of those things can be done at the same time. But what's interesting about what Biden's saying there is he's willing to re-implement a Trump-era policy on asylum. Axios reported previously on the specifics of what this executive order would do. And it would require asylum seekers to claim asylum at ports of entry, which is the legal way of doing it. Either they're supposed to claim in the first safe third country that they cross through on their way to the United States, which is something that Trump really cracked down on. So people coming from Guatemala, Honduras, et cetera, had to claim in the first country they crossed through that was considered safe for them to reside. They couldn't you know, walk through three other countries on their way to the United States. But because they really wanted to come to the United States, they would claim asylum there. And uh, there was this port of entry problem where people would basically cross in between ports of entry in the hopes that they wouldn't get caught by border patrol. And if they were, they would say, hey, I'm here to claim asylum. And because of whatever lack of enforcement was going on through DHS, um, they would be allowed to go through the asylum legal process. So Biden is considering saying, no, 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 you can't do that anymore. If you're going to cross illegally, then you don't get to claim asylum. That's not the way the process is supposed to work. You have to do it at a port of entry. And I think that alone would actually negate a lot of the reasons why people are trying to cross the border illegally, which is in the hopes of being able to sneak past and then having this fallback of asylum if they don't get to do that. Now, there still is a problem with the asylum program right now, which is that people are mostly caught and released into the U.S. and for whatever reason, don't show up for their court dates. So the alternatives to detention program is another factor here in, in why so many people are coming across the border illegally and why so many are claiming asylum, even if they might ultimately fail the uh, legal restriction as to who is actually granted asylum. So I think those two things together would ha have a, a huge dent, make a huge dent in the uh, swell of illegal crossings that we've seen over the past four years in the Biden administration. Yeah, I think, you know, what we're seeing today is absolutely the legacy of, of past policy failures, but it's also, there's been so much hysteria that's led to increased public attention and pressure onto the, the issue of migration on the Southern border. And I think that that's really put attention on policymakers where they're not used to it, where you have a policy like this that, you know, typically used to be something that was handled by border patrol, the Department of the Interior, and now it's something that Congress is considering making policy on day in and day out. And it's because we've created a situation because, you know, post 1986, we have a, a border that's very, you know, difficult in some places to cross that incentivizes rather than people crossing where they typically would in places like El Paso and Southern California, they're crossing over the harshest desert. And so, yeah, it is a situation where even temporary migrants are incentivized to stay. And how do you make policy around that? Given that there are a ton of people living in the United States right now without the proper you know, documentation necessary to be official workers. And so it's not just a migration problem we're dealing with. It's a population of people who have migrated to the United States without paper, people living in the U.S. that maybe we don't have a record of. And that's a very different problem from just dealing with migration at its face. And I will yeah, say, I said it de true. decreased uh, to a third of what it was. It decreased, it would have decreased by a third if we maintained the, the 1986 levels. Just want to be clear about that. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Um, I, I, I guess I take issue with the word hysteria because I think it suggests that people's fears are unfounded. But I mean, even just looking at the, the numbers of crossings that are counted by DHS in their monthly statistics, we've seen that under Trump, the uh, month with the most number of encounters at the southern border was May of 2019, where it reached just over 100,000, whereas consistently uh, during the Biden administration, we've seen levels above 200,000 and in some cases even above 300,000 uh, illegal crossings on a monthly basis. And this, of course, does not count gotaways, which are people who aren't even stopped by Border Patrol. They don't have any, uh, any processing whatsoever. We have no idea who they are. They're 
basically just floating around in the ether around the United States, and we don't know where they are or who they are. So I think, I mean, that's a serious problem. We've seen uh, people who are on the terror watch list come across the border. We've seen Chinese nationals taking advantage of this problem, African migrants taking advantage of it and using the southern border as a way to get across when they can't qualify for whatever visa programs we have in, in place. And then one last note before we wrap on Tester, who is in this vulnerable Senate seat and is considering perhaps voting to advance the Mayorkas impeachment. Um, in Montana, there's been an uh, outcry from residents there because of what's happening on the northern border, where numbers there have soared as well. 8,000 migrants in fiscal year 2023, which is up from 900 in 2021. So he's going to have a difficult decision to make there as immigration becomes an uh, issue in Montana, as well as uh, in the border states, as we've, as we've previously seen. We'll be back with more Rising after this.